All right, welcome to the Science of Golf Performance. I'm Bobby. I'm Alex. And I'm Chris. Um, and today we're talking about the best exercises to increase speed in your golf swing, right? All right. I think we'll talk speed. Um, I think we're talking kind of the best exercises in general, right? Yeah, so yeah. I think speed's where we'll definitely start because that's where I think people have the most excitement towards. And questions about, hopefully. Hopefully. And then uh, I think we'll also, what are we going to cover? Strength. Uh, best exercises to improve your sequence and sequencing. Mm -hmm. And then also um, we'll finish up with some mobility because everybody loves mobility in golf. So uh, I wouldn't say everybody, but a lot of people do. <laughs> <laughs> um, so first, if you enjoy our content that we're putting out, which we hope you do, if you can uh, like this video um, and if you can subscribe to our channel so you can get future updates, that would be awesome. We would really appreciate it. Um, I guess I'll start talking about speed, right, which is a really hot topic in golf. Um, so everyone's trying to hit the ball further, and if you're not trying to hit the ball further, you're, you're lagging behind, which is a huge detriment to your game. Um, so what are some things that we've seen, you know, our clients come in with questions about, about speed training? Uh, I think the biggest one I get, especially like coaching the classes, is people aren't sure what the main difference between like training for power and training for speed are, mm -hmm. and how they're getting the benefit of each one. Yeah. Um, what I try and do is relay that speed. We're trying to move fast. We're trying to teach our body to move quickly. And, you know, that's going to require a very, very light load or something. You know, we're not using a lot of weight with what the exercise is we're doing with that. So we're thinking speed sticks or, you know, think how heavy your golf club is. Um, so it's a little different from the power exercises that we do where we kind of load that a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think we also, I think the... In terms of a lot of the research that we've done, mm -hmm. we always talk about its relationship to speed because I think right. that's always the big thing people care about is if we're going to do it, that's the easiest metric. If I'm going to spend the time in the gym, how do I know that it actually transfers to my sport? And um, you know, in golf, you know, getting stronger, getting faster isn't doesn't always equate to a lower handicap immediately. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Jeez, <laughs> uh, <coughs> need some water. But. Uh, you know, I, I think the the K pulley um, from Eccentric, the when we did the Eccentric flywheel study, that was definitely an exercise that we saw that really increased the speed of the golfer, like 150 percent right. more so than just traditional strength training with bands and cables. So yeah. that that was massive. It was very cool. Um, and then obviously we did the two studies on uh, overspeed training mm -hmm. um, and saw that you know really using that single stick six to ten percent lighter. Um, with less swings, you know, like 30 swings twice a week, as mm -hmm. opposed to, well, it's like 12,000 or in some of the protocols that are out there. I and mean, that's a <laughs> massive amount of swinging. As if golfers aren't swinging enough already when they're practicing and they're right. playing and they're <laughs> exactly. taking lessons. And so, yeah. Exactly. Um, so yeah, so I think that's like overspeed training and eccentric flywheel rotational training are two huge exercises that if they're not in your toolbox already, I would say for speed, probably we need to put them there. Yeah, uh, to get technical, right, the, the K pulley and those eccentric moves are kind of working on the muscles to help you get faster. And something like the overspeed training is really working on your nervous system to help you get faster too. Mm -hmm. So learning a good pattern and then kind of unlocking the hidden potential that's in your body to you know let it loose and, and yeah. move fast, right? So Yeah, and I think going into the muscle side again, mm -hmm. strength is also a requirement and something you'll need to create more speed um, so we do recommend so doing the compound movements squatting benching deadlifting um, not only from like getting stronger standpoint but moving that weight fast i know we've started dabbling with velocity based training and getting some of our athletes using that uh, but another great way to to build speed is to build your strength uh, build your speed strength strength speed uh, all those things that we're kind of dabbling with right now another hole to go into but um yeah but i think for like for the golfer watching right now or the coach watching uh -huh. what's the difference between like a strength speed exercise and a speed strength like what do we mean when we talk about that I and mean, that was a beautiful segue by the way from <laughs> speed to strength um but in terms of you know i think i you know the complex movements definitely are important you know obviously we've talked about like triphasic versus traditional training in a lot of our research Mm -hmm. Can you explain, I guess, what speed strength is versus strength speed? Like, what does that mean? Yeah, so we can think uh, we're still getting strong. We're trying to get fast moving heavy weight faster every time. And we'll get stronger by moving weight faster. 
like heavier weight faster. Like if you squat 245 um, and you just use that, but you work on moving it faster each time, yeah, you're really gonna get stronger with that. Um, but so from a strength speed perspective, you're working on moving weight, getting stronger, moving it faster. And then if you wanna go into like speed strength, um, I think that's, you know, that's a different aspect where it's more speed focused, not so much loading the bar, not moving heavy weight fast, but moving a lighter weight faster. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the nice part of the velocity based training that we're exper experimenting or kind of doing some of our own research in terms of its right. uh, correlation to golf is um, that really brings all of that into a really functional and transferable light. Right. Uh, a lot of golfers come to us with concerns about lifting heavy because they don't want to get slow. Um, a lot of people don't want to get bulky and, you know, up to a certain point, we want you to get as strong as possible. But for some of our more advanced athletes, obviously there's a point of diminishing returns where we don't need to add another 10 pounds to the bar. Like Alex was saying, we want to move that weight as fast as possible. Right. So um, I mean, we've got plenty of people that have trained with us for, you know, a year or so that are getting to that point and we, you know, seeing what type of benefit they'll get by focusing now on moving it as fast as possible um, right. to carry over their golf swing. Yeah, the only way to get stronger isn't just like adding weight on the bar, but showing them we can build speed and more strength as well by, you know, mo just moving that weight faster rather than trying to load the bar forever. Right. I think a lot of the kind of the early research coming out now is even showing there's a study that just came out recently that using velocity based training is, you know, where you actually the concern was you had to be strong enough to do mm -hmm. velocity based, you know, programming or training. Um, it's actually shown that you can actually get more strength gains using it then that might not, there might not actually be that you have to be X amount of strong. Mm -hmm. There's actually going to be benefit in kind of in all levels of, of training. So, right. uh, so I think the takeaway it sounds like is um, squatting, deadlifting, you know, bench pressing, those compound movements with barbells, mm -hmm. some of the best ways to increase your strength. Um, how you do it, whether it's triphasic or traditional or velocity based, you know, that's, <laughs> that's going to be up to, you know, I think finding that professional out there who can Right. Take a look at you, you know, same thing with your speed, identify, do you need more of a neurological, uh, you know, uh, intervention, or do you need more of a muscular intervention like the cape bully? Right. Um, so, yeah, so let's talk about, let's kind of get away from the gym a little bit. Yeah. And let's talk about sequence. Mm -hmm. uh, a big portion of creating speed in your golf swing is obviously the technical aspect of things, right? You can take someone who's incredibly strong and have them swing a golf club That's and... Not me. <laughs> It might, <laughs> it might not move as fast as someone who's swung a golf club for a very long time, right? So understanding not only technique, but also what your body is doing during that technique is absolutely very important. Um, so we use technology like the K-Vest to really specifically look at, you know, what your body as an athlete is doing during your golf swing. I think that's a great tool. Not everybody might have access to that though, right? Well, even those that do still struggle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were pointing that way on that one. Um, so <laughs> getting a good analysis of what that is can be really important for golfers that might be kind of stuck from a technical standpoint. Um, but then also understanding how exercises in the gym can be more golf-like to help you with that sequence is super important. So we do a lot of medicine ball throws, right, with you know something like a six to an eight pound medicine ball, so we're moving it fast. But from a coaching perspective, right, we're making sure that we're cueing appropriately so that you're using the ground, you're not just chucking the ball with your arms, because that's not what we want to do during our golf swing. So I think finding the right exercise that works mentally and physically for you um, as a golfer is very important. And then too, from a coach's standpoint. Yeah, definitely. And like I mentioned earlier, making sure that the load is light, like you said, six to eight pound medicine balls. Um, so we're teaching the body how to move fast. We're in those fast twitch muscle fibers working more, more comparable to a golf swing than like a heavy power movement. Right. Well, I think a lot of the interesting when you're thinking about, you know, what exercises do you want to use from a sequencing standpoint? I think it's the common language is hips go first, torso comes second, mm -hmm. you know, the kind of your kinematic sequencing like we're talking about with the K-Vest. Right. Uh, I think the kinetic sequencing is one that I think is probably more important. Yeah. Um, and I think we're going to see that in the next five years, a lot of the research that's coming out mm -hmm. um, and thinking about how you're using the ground with those exercises. So if we used like a, a shot put throw where you're loaded and you're firing the, ball, the medicine ball that way. Um, you know, we've looked at it on force plates, you know, depending on how you're starting and actually utilizing the ground, right. you can, you know, 
kin kinetically, typically golfers will drive horizontally first, then rotationally, and then vertically. Depending on how you're loading with that med ball throw, you actually can reverse that sequence unintentionally. Yeah. Um, so I think having that intent when you're doing a medicine ball exercise, and that's, we've had the episode that we talked about medicine balls, right? Um, where there's not a clear <laughs> consensus in terms of how they work. We know that they do work. Yeah. Uh, I think that's definitely one of the benefits of medicine balls is it is an opportunity to work on your sequencing at speed, right. um, which is huge. Yeah. So, uh, so why don't we wrap up with uh, everybody, there's a, you can't talk golf, fitness without mobility, right? <laughs> so, um, so what are the main areas that you know, people watching should be thinking about mobility? Uh, I think one thing I, I bet you would agree with this, Alex, mm. is when people first come in, they're, they're stuck on a few different parts of mobility, right? Everyone's worried about, you know, all right, am I, can I touch my toes or, you know, can I bend backwards? And that's important, but golf is a multi-dimensional um, sport, right. right? We're working in different planes, mm -hmm. especially rotational plane. And one of the biggest things that we work on is increasing your range of motion in your rotational centers, yep. right? Which I know we've talked about previously, but it's, it's worth mentioning again, because so many people miss this very crucial step and this can unlock a whole lot of club head speed in a lot of people. So. Right, yeah. My hamstrings might be tight, but that might not be the most important thing um, as far as me getting more external rotation in my shoulders to get a good backswing and create more space coming down, right? Right. And definitely check out the episode on stretching because um, <laughs> that's always a common one, right? My hamstrings are tight, I need to stretch. So definitely check that episode out if right. you're interested. If, if, if that's you, check that out. <laughs> um, but I guess, so what are the four rotary centers, just in case this is you know, their first time watching, you know, seeing us and kind of here, what, what are the four rotary centers, Alex? Yeah, so as we've gone over in other episodes, um, we have our, the neck, the shoulder, uh, the T-spine, and the hips, and those are the most our four rotary centers in which we want to optimize mobility uh, to get the most out of your technique. Cool. Well, I think that kind of covers the, the main areas and topics we want to talk about. I think if you um, have or you want more details on any of those exercises, obviously just check out our YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. We have other, particularly our mini series. Um, so if you haven't seen the mini series to this episode yet, um, they're released on Thursdays. So t check that out too, where we actually take you through how to do a lot of these different exercises right. and some of our tops or most commonly effective ones. Obviously you're an N of one and there's going to be some nuances, but um, you know, definitely a lot of these exercises will help the 85% of you watching. Right. Um, any last words of wisdom guys? If you enjoyed it, throw us a pity like. <laughs> and subscribe to the channel so that you can go see that mini series. Um, yeah, so you can get some actionable things you can take away. Um, I know we, we talk a lot about the theory, but that mini series is going to give you some exercises that you can start on right now. Exactly. So cool. Well, thanks for hanging out with us today, and uh, we'll see you soon.